This video is recorded in 720p HD format. Please ensure that the 720p HD option is selected in your YouTube player so that you can see the text clearly. Hi, my name is Derek and this is part 6 of the ActionScript 3 game programming series where I show you how to create and load tile maps into your Flash application. You're watching chapter 1 which is a short tutorial on how to use the freeware TAT tile map editor by Tomi Tilly. You can download it from the URL over here at kotosivu.dnainternet.net. Please download and install TAT before watching the rest of this video to make it quicker. You might also need the latest Java runtime which you can get from java.com. You only need this if you notice that TAT doesn't start the first time that you run it. So let's get started. You could use the texture pack included with this video or the circle tile pack from lostgarden.com which is a very nice open source circle sort of circular tile pack that has a lot of interesting graphics that is freely that is a pretty free license which lets you use it in your indie projects. So let's create a new tap project. I'm just going to start up tap here. So we're going to create a new project called test with a fairly small tile size of 24 by 24, which will give us pretty fine grain collision. So once TAT is started up, you go to the file menu and you click new project. And we're just going to call it test. And just make sure that the tile size width and height is set to 24 by 24, because that's the size that we're going to be using for our tiles. And that's the size that our image has already been sized to. And then hit OK, create a new project. So this project is empty. The first thing we're going to do is add a tile palette. Go to the project menu and click new tile palette. We're just going to call this palette palette. Just keep it simple. The tile size is already correct. Now we're going to add an image to this palette. Use the add images button for this. Here's a tile map image that I've already created. So I'll just show you how that looks. It's a very simple image. It contains three tiles. So if you look at it there, as you can see, it's width and height are both divisible by 24 and it contains three separate tiles in the one image. So in the real world, this image would probably be much bigger and it would contain a lot more tiles. But this is just a simple demonstration. So that will do for our purposes. So once you've selected your tile image, just hit open and just check that it's loaded it up. OK, over here, the width and the height should look OK. And also make sure that the split option has been selected to get the correct results. Then hit OK. So there's our tile palette. So you, as you can see, it's split it up into three tiles for us and we can just pick which one we want to place in our map. So before we can do that, we need to actually create the map, which you can just do by hitting the project menu again and click new tile map. Now in here, we're just going to call this guy map and we're going to make it about 200 by 100 rows, rows by columns wide. So pretty small map, not enormous, but big enough for our purposes. The tile width and height is already set correctly from the earlier dialogues and then hit OK. So it takes a few seconds because it has to allocate a fair amount of memory because displaying the map in all in one go is pretty CPU intensive. Okay, so there's our map. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger just so we can edit it more easily. And as you can see, it has a white background color. So let's change that. That'll be the first thing we do. So click on the map background color button. And we'll just choose a sort of a nice light blue and hit OK. That's already looking better. So we want that to sort of represent the sky in our map. So let's go through the basic tile operations. There's only a few. We're going to start off by drawing some tiles using the Draw Tiles tool. So click on that and then choose the tile you want to use. So I'm just going to use this little brown tile over here. It's sort of a Mario style brick. And you can click and just drop them down just by clicking. And you can even click and drag if you want. So it's up to you. You can sort of use this to just fill in areas quite quickly. If you make a mistake or you don't like something, you can use the eraser tool, which is on the left here, to remove some tiles. So you, as you can see, I'm removing the last few tiles there. We can also use the fill tool to fill in areas. So let's say I have something that looks like this. It's a very useful tool. Let's say I want to fill in that little gap, but really quickly, I don't want to have to drag it inaccurately. So I click on the fill area with tiles tool and make sure I have a tile selected. And then I just click anywhere inside that empty area and bang, I've got it. And the next tool that's really useful is the region selection tool, which is very similar to the region select in Photoshop. So you select that and you click and drag with the area you want. So I just want that set of blocks. Now I can copy and paste that. So edit menu, copy and edit menu, paste or control C, control V, whichever takes your fancy. And you can fill out your level really quickly. So I'm just going to hit control V just to do a quick paste. And I'm going to keep pasting. So as you can see, I'm starting to fully flesh out my level very quickly here. 
just using these tools and only a couple of tiles, I'm starting to create something pretty interesting that a character could probably run across if this was a platformer. That's the sort of game that I have in mind when I'm editing this level. But it's very flexible and you could create an RPG or an RTS style game using this technique too. So let's add a few more bricks just for some visual interest. Just remember to go back to the area tool first and then you click and drag. So I've just got a sort of quite an interesting brickwork thing going on here. I'm just going to fill it up. Now, what if I wanted these bricks to point in another direction if I wanted to rotate the actual images? Well, I could do that very easily by using the rotate tile tool and clicking on the tiles that I want to rotate. And the, each time you click, it rotates at 90 degrees to the right. So you could keep doing it. And with some tiles, this is actually quite crucial because you want them to be rotated in a number of different ways. And that's pretty much it for this. Let's just place a few more tiles just to keep a fairly visual interest here. And you can use the fill tool with the selection as well, which is very useful. You can just select sort of an area that you want to fill up and it'll fill it up for you. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's save that out to our XML file. So go to the file menu, save, and then we're just going to use the file name it gives us, which is very similar to the name of the project with the tat TME extension. And it saves a zip file, which contains a number of other files. So I'll show you what's in there. It is actually sort of a compact package, this zip file that represents our entire project in one file, which is quite useful. It's a bit strange way of saving things, but it's actually quite useful once you get used to it. So there's the file that's saved. I'm just going to use WinRAR to open that to show me what's inside it. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of files. The most important files that it has are the images folder, which actually contains our tile map PNG. So it would store all the images for your project in here. Then it has the map.xml, which actually contains the tile indices for every layer. So that's the it represents the actual tiles in the map. That's probably going to be your biggest file most of the time. The project file is not important to us. It just stores information for tap. We're not going to use it. Last but not least, there's the tileset.xml file, which contains the definitions of the tiles. So it essentially says which PNG image is mapped to, to which particular tile, which we'll get into in much more detail later on. But these three items are the most important. And that's pretty much it. So now you have a, a pretty small functional level that you can use. And in our next tutorial, we're going to start hooking up some code to display this in an action script project. Uh, my name is Derek. And if you visit karmatraining.org, you can grab a higher res version of this video with a much, much higher res version of this video, source files, podcasts, and transcripts for this too. So why don't you head over there and check out the rest of it? Thank you for watching.